Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Thursday the 24th of September. Let's pray. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 37 Fret not because of evil doers. Be not jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like grass, and like the green herb fade away. Trust in the Lord, and be doing good. Dwell in the land, and be nourished with truth. Let your delight be in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord, and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light, and your just dealing as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait for him. Do not fret over those that prosper as they follow their evil schemes. Refrain from anger and abandon wrath. Do not fret lest you be moved to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. Yet a little while and the wicked shall be no more. You will search for their place and find them gone. But the lowly shall possess the land, and shall delight in abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash at them with their teeth. The Lord shall laugh at the wicked, for he sees that their day is coming. The wicked draw their sword and bend their bow, to strike down the poor and needy, to slaughter those whose walk in truth. Their sword shall go through their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. The little that the righteous have is better than great riches of the wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the godly, and their inheritance shall stand forever. They shall not be put to shame in the perilous time, and in days of famine they shall have enough. But the wicked shall perish. Like the glory of the meadows, the enemies of the Lord shall vanish. They shall vanish like smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous are generous in giving. For those who are blessed by God shall possess the land, but those who are cursed by him shall be rooted out. When your steps are guided by the Lord and you delight in his way, though you stumble you shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds you fast by the hand. I have been young and now am old, yet never have I seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging their bread. All the day long they are generous in lending, and their children shall also be blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and you shall abide forever. For the Lord loves the thing that is right, and will not forsake his faithful ones. The unjust shall be destroyed forever, and the offspring of the wicked shall be rooted out. The righteous shall possess the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and their tongue speaks the thing that is right. The law of their God is in their heart, and their footsteps shall not slide. The wicked spy on the righteous, and seek occasion to slay them. <coughs> the Lord will not leave them in their land, nor let them be condemned when they are judged. Wait upon the Lord and keep his way. He will raise you up to possess the land, and when the wicked are uprooted you shall see it. I myself have seen the wicked in great power, and flourishing like a tree in full leaf. I went by, and lo, they were gone. I sought them, but they could nowhere be found. Keep innocence, and heed the thing that is right, for that will bring you peace at the last. But the sinners shall perish together, and the posterity of the wicked shall be rooted out. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord shall stand by them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and shall save them, because they have put their trust in him. Reading from 1 Kings 11 King Solomon loved many foreign women along with the daughter of Pharaoh. 
Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonian and Hittite women from the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the Israelites, you shall not enter into marriage with them, neither shall they with you, for they will surely incline your heart to follow their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. Among his wives were 700 princesses and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not true to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon followed Astarte, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. So Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and did not completely follow the Lord as his father David had done. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and for Molech, the abomination of the Ammonites, on the mountain east of Jerusalem. He did the same for all his foreign wives, who offered incense and sacrifice to their gods. Then the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart had turned away from the Lord the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice and had commanded him concerning this matter that he should not follow other gods, but he did not observe what the Lord commanded. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, Since this has been your mind, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes that I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom from you and give it to your servant. Yet for the sake of your father David, I will not do it in your lifetime. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. I will not, however, tear away the entire kingdom, I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. Reading from Acts 17. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was deeply distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he argued in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and also in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Also some Epicurean and Stoic philosophers debated with him. Some said, what does this babbler want to say? Others said, he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign divinities. This was because he was telling the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. So they took him and brought him to the Areopagus and asked him, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? It sounds rather strange to us, so we would like to know what it means. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners living there would spend their time in nothing but telling or hearing something new. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, And he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he's not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. When they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some scoffed, but others said, We will hear you again about this. At that point, Paul left them, but some of them joined him and became believers, including Dionysius the Areopagite and a woman named Damaris and others with them. Blessed be the God of Israel, 
who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We pause to pray for those uh, known to us, and for those that we would long to come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The prayer of the day. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that, always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks for joining me this morning. I look forward to seeing some of you this morning. I hope you have a good day. <laughs>